Cool, and we live. What's up? What's up, y'all? Happy Tuesday. It's ladies' hey. night tonight. <laughs> Dang, we should have the music cue. Right, right. I should have right. That would have been fun. Yes. Welcome, welcome. We're gonna let y'all hop in. We got a good one for you today. Look, we know today, well, we know this week, excuse me, is Teachers Appreciation Week, but today is Teachers Day. So had to bring up some of our favorite educators to come on and just talk about their mobile home investing journey while being in the education system. So excited. Good evening, em what's the name? Emily. <laughs> Let me see, Barb, what's going on? Okay, hold on. Okay, there you go. I couldn't see the comments at first. But yeah, like I said, so this is going to be a good one. What I love about it is that we have so many different investors that I feel like we all come from like different backgrounds when first starting our journey. Like for myself, I was fired from my job. So I was out here hustling. But before mm -hmm. that, I was a social worker. So Nicole can attest to this. Even being a social worker, we're very involved in the educational system. So, mm -hmm. you know, definitely, we can definitely speak and attest to that. But, you know, again, like Nicole, she was a social worker. And now we have Wanaki Marie and we have Devry on here, one of our fast track students who is also a teacher as well. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. So really quick, hold on. Let me see. We got CEO. Hey, Miss Cherie. Hey, Miss Cherie. Hey, hey Joseph. Hey, girl. Yes. Hey, Joseph. Hey, everybody. So before we get started, let me know in the comments, do we have any other teachers with us tonight? So let me know that in the comments. Cool, cool. So we're going to jump right into it. So first, I think I want to start with Miss Wanaki Marie. Because I feel like Wanaki, y'all, has a great story that I feel like is going to help a lot of people, especially for my individuals who are still in their beginning journey, still trying to figure it out, still maybe like, man, I see all these testimonies. I see all these people closing these deals like, man, so-and-so got three deals closed in four weeks. And here I am three months later, and I still haven't closed my deal. So Go ahead, Wanaki. Put the people on game. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, everybody. So I'm Wanaki, um, a former teacher. I used to teach 10th grade math, worked with a lot of youth throughout the city of Chicago, teen out, uh, various teen outreach programs. Everyone can see in here. Okay. Oh, that's what it's saying. Various teen outreach programs, uh, coach high school basketball. And so my foundation was education. That is what I did. Um, and then I ended up uh, having the discrepancy with the principal at the time where I was teaching. Sorry, y'all. That's my child. She's going she to bark a little bit throughout this. Uh, but I was having a discrepancy with the principal. He didn't think that um, financial literacy, uh, pushing for trades, entrepreneurship, ownership was important. He felt like parents brought their kids to go to college, and that was our job. That was our primary focus. So I ended up separating with the intentions of going into real estate anyway. Um, so at the time, I did have a business partner, and we were getting into uh, wholesaling single-family homes. Uh, so that was before the law was changed in Illinois. And then Byron and Sharnice, they were flipping mobile homes. And they were like, uh, you need to go ahead and switch lanes because you see what you're trying to do over here. And this is kind of like a, heart, a hot market. Everybody's doing it. Over here, it's still the, the coast is still clear. Um, so I, it didn't take a whole lot for it to make sense. Sorry, she wants to play me. <laughs> She's embarrassing. Girl, I thought that was your stomach. I was about to say, no. damn. No, I knew that was Coco because y'all don't understand. Coco knows when Wanaki is like on the phone or talking or something. She's always like that. It's so funny. Go ahead, sis. Just to fast forward, when I decided that I would dive into mobile homes, at that point, I'm unemployed. So I'm like trying to figure out what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, to, I heard you say in the beginning, like, you know, people, you watching people close deals before you. It was literally like the same thing for me. It took me all, over a year to close my first deal because I maxed out my, this is before the wholesaling method was like really being pushed. So I'm thinking, okay, I need to first get a yes from a part. 
Um, then I got to get approved to the park. Credit was maxed out from being unemployed, um, was not liquid at all. So then I had to get creative in that way. Um, like my very first deal I was going to do, I had an investor and I was going to have to use his credit. So he was going to actually have to have a name in his, uh, the, the home in his name. But then we, in, that ended up falling through. He was moving real slow, but you can't really tell people how to move with their money and their credit, you know? So that was the thing. I was very dependent. Um, and I just kept going driving. They'll tell you, I called them like, I can't believe I've been told no so many times. Cause then again, this was like the beginning where I'm just kind of like trial and error in it. Um, so yeah, it took, it took over, it took over a year to actually like find the right partner. Cause I still had to use somebody's credit. I wasn't, I couldn't even take out a loan if I wanted to, mm-hmm. um, use my, use cat other people's money. And then to actually get approved into a park and, and get the deal done. It took a while. I will tell you though, the thing that kept me motivated while I was like in pursuit of my own thing was celebrating like Byron and Shawnee's and seeing them like winning. As long as I saw people winning, I knew, okay, it's possible. You just got to keep going. So you literally like just um, actively celebrating those people as I went. It was hard to do sometimes because you do get frustrated, but making myself be like, eh, nope, I'm gonna celebrate this because the energy is close. So I just got to keep, keep at it, you know? <clears throat> No, I love that. I love that. So I think that's really good because I feel like I know Devery, you kind of shared that with us prior to us hopping on live that, you know, you see your classmates, they booming, you know, they've been doing all these great things and you like, man, when is my deal coming? But like Nicole said, it's only been like 30 days and you hear Wanaki has, it's took her a year, one year to finally close her first deal. And ever since then, they always say the the first deal can either make or break you. But what yeah. I love about you, Juan, <laughs> is that, like you said, you took that deal and learned from it. And then you've been 10 x ever since then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the thing was, when we finally did close that deal, it was as soon as COVID had hit and it put everything on pause. So we ended up holding, yeah. having to have the home a lot longer um, than planned because when COVID initially hit, obviously nobody knew what it was. So we was all, people were scared. So we couldn't yeah. even show the home. But my mindset after that was if I can flip a home during COVID, like literally at the height of it, then I can flip it under normal conditions, like under any other regular condition. And so for me, it was like, oh, this is game time. And from there, it just never stopped. Mm-hmm. So can I ask you a question? Mm-hmm. So my question would be then, I know you said you saw Byron and Sharnice closing deals, so that kept you motivated. But that's a, that's oftentimes what I hear a lot. Like, I can't stay motivated. So what else did you do during that year to not be like, you know what, F it. Let me go to Airbnb. Let me buy a stock trading. What, what yeah. was it that? Did you have a consistent schedule? Like, what kept you going? That's a great question. Well, at that time, obviously, I had been in full-blown entrepreneurship, right? So I had to create a, a like, morning rituals for myself in general. So I'm already, like, huge on personal development. I read. I'm always finding different ways to pour into myself to stay motivated anyway. You're going to need mm-hmm. that in for the journey, regardless if it's mobile homes, if it's Airbnb, whatever it is. The other thing is... I had, I had, I'm one of those people where I can catch on quickly. So I, I had learned and I picked up and put down a lot of different trades, if you will. Right. Like, so at one point I was teaching myself stocks and all of these things. So I'm that person and I'm so self-aware that I'm like, eh, no, like it's the same for me. Uh, a lot of people like to brag about being the jack of all trades, but they typically don't know the end of that, which is, but a master of none. And so at some point you got to decide. Am I, where am I going to place my energy a hundred percent? And then once that pops off, then I can go ahead and start, you know, diversifying. But if you never give anything a hundred percent, then you can't really know for sure if it will work. And so I was just at a point where it's like, I know it works because I'm watching people do it. So it's just a matter of me deciding to commit to it for the long term and and let it is so interesting too because i was podcasting during that time because mm. i was podcasting my own entrepreneurial journey so it was called checking in from the basement so i was listening to an old episode just last week and that episode was talking about it was a year from the point that i had started so it was talking about me actually closing that first deal and i'm like this is crazy so even documenting <laughs> oh your journey, wow i like that crazy. 
And then I went back to the episode when I first started flipping mobile home. I remember I had Sharnice and Byron on there, like the beginning, the beginning. It was just so crazy. <laughs> you did. That we right. listen to like these different phases of my life. So I would encourage you to document your journey so that you can see, like literally you have proof of the growth that you're making. I like that though, because it's not traditional. Dear Diary, it no. is video, so you can even hear how mature you are then versus now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Let me write that down. <laughs> Come on, now why the key on here dropping gems? Okay. I, I'm like, this is crazy. Like, then I started, like, really thinking about everything it took to get there. And I'm like, wow. And that really does, that re-motivates you. Now I'm like, oh, now I need 10 more. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, it, it sends you there. I love it. So let me know. I want to know right now, my people that's watching, I know we got a few members in the Facebook group. Shout out our Facebook group members. I know we got our YouTube people. So let me know in the comments if you are going through a deal right now, if you're struggling, or if you just not have closed your first deal, let me know that in the comments. Give me a thumbs up if that's you right now. <laughs> Can we let Debra talk? Debra, you on mute. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we can let Debbie talk while we wait for others to uh, give them a thumbs up. But I, I definitely have to agree with so much of what Wanaki said, especially the part about staying connected to the group. Um, yes, I, I'm, I'm still a baby. I mean, I went through the February class, finished in March, and I'm still a baby. But I feel discouraged sometimes when I see everybody else around me doing awesome things. And just like Wana, he said, I celebrate them. It's as mm -hmm. hard as it may feel sometime to do that when I haven't done anything yet, as far as making a deal. Now I'm very consistent with my work, yep. but I, I agree with her 100%. You got to celebrate those who are doing the great things and stay connected to the group. If you are part of the elite squad, make sure that you're on every live that you can be on because there's so much good information that they give us every single time. And I think that's what's keeping me motivated, knowing that I have that support and I can go to Nicole in any. Uh -oh. Oh, hello. Hey, I was scared. That was me. I was like, oh, <laughs> I, know, I thought it was me, too. I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> you see, I froze. I'm like, I know. Right. I'm like, well, that might be the end if it's on me, because, you know, Byron handle all the technical stuff. <laughs> I don't know what okay, just happened. Back. No, you back. You back. Okay. So, Debbie, let's get in your business a little bit. I know you haven't closed the deal just yet. And, Nicole, you may know a little bit of this, too. But, like, what? Like, have you been driving for dollars? Have you had some potential deals? Like, let's talk about that for a little bit. <laughs> Good. Mainly, I have been doing a lot of just the groundwork right now, mm. uh, driving for dollars, putting out my bandit signs, calling parks. Uh, like I said, making sure I'm on all the lives that I can be on. Any um, Nicole just had a workshop last week uh, for park uh, to to learn how to talk to park managers. I made yeah. sure I was a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, so just trying to make sure I'm connected to any of the additional um, support and. And PD, I call it PD because I'm a teacher. <laughs> uh, any additional PD that I can get from mobile home and leading investors to continue to grow, I know. <laughs> Professional development. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what, know what that's PD what's is, so they can know in the comments. They probably like PD. Yeah, okay. professional development. <laughs> but that's what's keeping me going uh, until I make that 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 first one. Um, mm -hmm. I, I want to be like Wanaki. I want to be, I want to get out of the classroom. <laughs> nice. <laughs> have hoodies and things like that like i do i do i have t-shirts i sure do because i tell you i will also walk through home depot with no like no for no reason but i know i'm gonna meet like contractors i know i'm gonna meet mm -hmm. people in that world and i know i'm exchange information so literally i will make a day where i just will walk through lows well, I like that. Home depot. like i know it's gonna stop people and start conversations so word of mouth is honestly you never know who knows somebody living in the trailer or a that's mobile. right that's so it's okay. like just wearing it. I've had so many conversations start with, oh yeah, you know what? My cousin that uh lived in one, and I'm like, yeah. So then we'll start having dialogue. You said you do what now? Okay, let me have your card. Yep. Yes. I love that. So Devery, I heard you say you're still in the classroom. So are you still like full time teacher? Yes, I am. My goal is to actually not have to go back in August. Okay. Uh, I know that's, that's me. I got to hit the ground running uh, this summer. 
but that's my goal. I've been teaching for 15 years. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, moved from elementary to middle school. I've been in middle school for two years now. Um, right. But yeah, my goal is to not have to return in August. Mm -hmm. That's right. So let me ask you this, because I know you said full-time teacher. I know, Nicole, you could talk on this a little bit as well. But I know you talked about the groundwork. So you're like in the streets, in the parks, making those connections. But let's talk about that schedule a little bit, because I feel like we got other teachers. We got other people with nine to fives on here. How do you uh, how do you decipher that schedule between like, OK, I'm going to work my job. But then what does that mobile home investing time look like? I'm not Very gonna good question. Nicole helped me a lot with this one because um, <laughs> I was having a struggle trying to make calls. I'm at what is considered a late school. So that means okay. we didn't dismiss until 4.15. Mm -hmm. And oh, so that okay. meant I have to make my calls after five normally. Mm -hmm. When Nicole was and reminded me, she's like, don't you have planning time? And I do. I do have three days a week that are mine. But there are still times when I get pulled, like mm -hmm. last week when she wanted us to do our park calls. I was sitting down at my desk, getting ready to make my calls. And my dean walked in and she had a meeting with me. I was like, damn it, because I had to turn the homework in to Nicole by four o'clock. <laughs> that messed me up. But um, I do that. So if I on those days that are free, I try to make calls while I'm at work. Nicole gave me that tip. And if that doesn't work out, I do what I can after hours. And I have been fortunate enough to get some park managers after hours. But um, that's how I have to work it during the week. Uh, and then on the weekend, you know, I'm doing my driving for dollars, my, my bandit signs. And I even even if I have a chance, I, I talk to park managers on the weekend if they're there. Nice. I like that. What were you going to say, Nicole? First of all, I was laughing at Landa's comment. She said, Home Depot field trip, cough, cough. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I definitely skipped over that. I want to keep in giving y'all gems. So I hope y'all taking notes because that was definitely a gem. I love mm -hmm. it. But um, when, I when I was working, y'all, I'm telling you, it, it was not easy. It was not easy because like she said, I was working in the school as a school social worker and I was in a high school. So, you know, them little motherfuckers think they grown. <laughs> oh, I'm dealing with suicide assessments to this family just got evicted. This family over here need a food referral. So I'm going to tell you something. Every time it's it was custom for us to walk during in the hallways with our phone, I would be on the phone with a park walking Johnny back to his class. Teacher, like he keep walking out. And they I was like an auntie to a lot of the kids in school. So I'll be like, hey, let me get your ass back to class. <laughs> walking down the hallway on the phone and he'll be like I'm sorry I'm sorry Miss Briscoe I'm sorry Miss B I'm sorry I'll talk to him get him some snacks and I would be on the phone to the point my students was like what you what you doing with mobile homes we saw that sound on your car I forgot to take the, the, the car <laughs> magnet off my car so I ain't gonna lie that's how I found out so many of my kids my students was living in mobile home park Nice. Wow. So they will be like, Miss Miss B, I live in a mobile home park. Where? <laughs> oh, is in is in Mebbin by some so I was like, okay, I'm gonna come see you this weekend. Or a lot of my students, they would need ride home. They missed the bus. Mm -hmm. I'll be the pappy. I'll take them home. <laughs> I, got I got it. And I get to leave here at three instead of four fifty. I'll take him. Give it Johnny, get in the back seat. Put your seat put on. Yep. So I for me. Any opportunity I could, I would take. So even though our days was hectic, I still need, I need 20 to 30 minutes to myself a day. Mm -hmm. Now in the school system, I knew I couldn't get that consistently, but I became so engulfed with mobile home investing that any break that I got, I did it. Mm -hmm. Also on my way to work, I had a mini goal in my head. Before you go to work or at the end of the day, you got to drop two bandit signs. So I always did two bandit signs. If we had like SATs going on that day or some type of testing, I would do stuff in the morning time. And if I knew I was getting out the building on time, I would do it in the evening. I consumed myself with it. I started yeah. telling my students, oh, you live in a mobile home park. And if you know if there's any vacant homes, I was telling my students, I'll give your family a referral fee. They was like, you'll pay us for telling you. Yep. <laughs> Everybody was coming to tell me about a mobile home. One of my students just inboxed me, inboxed me, Sarah. And now she's 21 years old. She's like, Miss Briscoe, you got any mobile homes to say I need one? What you need, girl? 
I got what you need. Exactly. Right. I'm telling you, get everybody involved. And I just, I had to plan stuff early in the morning or late in the evening. I got mm -hmm. my daughter involved. Mm -hmm. Making her write bandit signs as a as a chore, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. on Saturday morning, she like, Mom, we gotta put out these bandit signs. This is a family affair, goddamn it. Yes. Yes. And talk about it with your friends. I'll tell you, like my friends now, like even though they're not interested, a lot of them in um buying and selling mobile homes, they will send me leads. Like they'll be like, mm -hmm. This is thank you, and then they'll just shoot me. A, even though sometimes I'm like, Okay, this is an investor, this ain't really all that good. But right. I, appreciate, <laughs> I, right. I appreciate the fact that you even thinking like that to like have or if they ride past a new park they're like oh, i'll just roll past this park you know because they're not thinking about it until you start talking about it exactly if they're not interested like they still start to see it you know thoughts become things the more you talk about something the more you actually start seeing it and they're like oh this made me think of you you've been to you've been to this park you know what so and so live in this park i never even thought to come go in there i'll go get pictures for you you know what i mean so mm -hmm. just make it a part of the conversations no, that's a fact. But that's also too because you solidified yourself as the go-to person in your circle of friends for mobile homes, you know, because you have been talking about it. So the biggest thing that I want everybody in the comments to listen to, even though Devery, we've been talking about your journey. Yes, you have not closed the deal, but look how engulfed you got in the process of you're going to close the deal soon because you involved and you're engulfing yourself in mobile home investing. Same thing. Wanaki has done it. Me and Nicole, Nicole said it's a family affair. Like, look, my whole life is mobile home investing to the point mm -hmm. that again, we have to literally separate mobile homes, business, the personal. <laughs> it has literally taken over my life. And that has been yeah. the key to our success. That's the number one question Byron and I get like, how have y'all become so successful? Because our whole life is this. <laughs> this is our whole life right here. Mobile home investing. Like, I'm so serious. And But because we have engulfed ourselves, because we have built those relationships, same thing like Nicole talked about, building those relationships, every one of key as well, we've been able to really scale and go further. So I hope y'all really taking notes to that to know, like, yes, even if you're in the beginning part of your journey and you're like, you know, it's not working for me or man. Yeah, I can't find no homes under 30,000 in Florida or I can't do this. So you got all these doubts already because you really haven't got out in the field. You really need to get out in the field because the one thing that I always say about mobile home investing is that this is a relationship business. This is relationships. So anything you find online is cool. You can find a few gems still online, but if you're not out in the field, if you're not opening up your mouth, if you're not walking through Home Depot on a random Tuesday like my sis Wanaki do, just trying to meet these contractors mm -hmm. and these handymen and meeting these dealers and stuff, listen, you're going to be still saying, oh, that shit don't work. Right. <laughs> they just on the internet talking. <laughs> And then don't be afraid to start over. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I did when I got to the point where I felt like, okay, what am I doing? It, this got to be me, right? So then I even I went back to like the Facebook group to the course, and I started from the beginning. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna start over. I'm about to start calling mm -hmm. Parks again. Like literally, I started from point A. Mm -hmm. I do that in general. When I was about to, when I was telling Shardy, I'm like, you know what? I'm about to just start wholesaling straight out. I know who the wholesaling goat is. It's Nicole. So I went and bought her forty dollar <laughs> course. Like, I'm, I'm serious because I'm like I know how to wholesale, but maybe it's something in there that is that could be essential. Like, maybe she gonna give me something else to you know what I mean. Like I'm like that. Like I don't mind. Yeah. I'm an educator, so I love education. So right. for me, it's like okay, let me see if I can learn something. It's forty dollars. Okay, you know what I mean? And I definitely went and got it just to see what else I can learn. Mm -hmm. So I don't ever I don't ever have a problem with starting over. But I feel like mm -hmm. maybe I'm moving too fast. Like sometimes we move fast because we think it's going to get us fast results. Yeah. Like sometimes yeah. slowing down will speed up the process. Like no. slow down, you know? Oh, say that again. Hold on. Sometimes <laughs> slowing down <laughs> will speed, up the, speed up the process. I like that. Mm -hmm. I hey like Siri, that. write that shit down. <laughs> <laughs> write that. Let me okay, because I feel like we all oh, I know I got that bad. I want everything to happen. I'll be like, all right, Char, you gotta slow down. You gotta, it's one day at a time. 
So, yes, I like this question. Um, Emily asks, are you using your personal cell phone numbers for business? So I can answer for myself. I never use my personal number. What about you, ladies? I use Google Voice. I use Google Voice. Yep, same here. I always use a Google number. And it's other, yep. it's different uh, landlines that you can get attached through your phone. But no, I don't want nobody knowing my personal number. <laughs> okay. Especially for those bandit signs, because yeah. you just want to make sure that it's not your real number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's two, one and then two. You don't want people calling, like, at least they calling that Google number. You know, that's not really ringing. And if it is, you're not getting that. But you don't want nobody calling you two, three o'clock in the morning. You know, sometimes yes, they, they do. Know. Right. They will. <laughs> and will. So that's really what it is. Oh, yeah. CEO said Grasshopper is good as well. Nice. Yeah. I got Grasshopper for uh, one of my businesses, but I still use Google Voice for everything mobile home because it's free 99, y'all. So mm -hmm. if you're just getting started out, use Google Voice. And mm -hmm. just to understand, we don't put it anywhere because it's personal. And two, bandit signs are called bandit because they're not, they're not legal in any state. That's why you yeah. see people put them up, they pull them down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some counties will actually backtrace the number to find you. So that's why you definitely don't want to use. And I just learned that. Um, you definitely don't want to use that too. And I'll be like, who? Who you? What is this? Exactly. Oh, no, that's, no I, don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> not me. <laughs> right. Not me. It's not me on there. But not no. Me. So I want to keep real quick because you mm -hmm. are doing some phenomenal things. And so you're not a teacher no more, right? But you have no. your non right, you have your nonprofit through yes. So I want you to talk about that a little bit and how because I know you just closed on a recent mobile home while you were still able to do that. So talk about that journey a little bit. <laughs> um but oh, oh my bad, right, right. Let, so my, my nonprofit is called Elevate Greatness, and I and I and I remember getting my first contract ironically it was my very first contract i started january 18th something like that but ironically for it was four years to the date that was the date where um, the principal and i had the discrepancy and agreed that i would not be coming back so at that mm. same back school so i started literally with my program that does exactly what i was talking about four years ago but okay uh but i digress but i mean i, I guess that just comes down to time and then god just letting me know like you've been on the right track but i told shawnee and byron when i first got that contract i was like mobile home investing it really did give me the space that i needed like i knew i can produce income so that puts you in a space where you can be creative and create these curriculums and you know do everything that you need to do at least that i needed to do to get the program education is always still a passion of mine i just wanted to be able to uh, approach it from my my way you know what i mean exactly yeah i was able to step back mobile home investment and uh supplementing my income and then come back on my terms and so when i walked back in the building i was like are you coming for an interview you coming back i was like uh yeah i'm coming back but no i'm not coming back to work <laughs> you know what i mean and yeah, that's just, yeah. You know, exactly and that's kind of good yes so partner with after school matters so that now that's why i just came from we teach our young boys how to podcast and how to leverage podcasts <laughs> and monetize and things like that so literally everything that i wanted to do four years ago has been made possible by way of in mobile home investing. It's just freed up my time. So that it's always a good skill to have because you can always come back to it. Once you learn it, you can literally walk, drive past the mobile home park and be like, you know what, I can actually, I, I feel like making some money, some extra money. <laughs> exactly. and you can literally do that and, and make extra money. Yeah. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Congratulations. Please. Please. Hey, baby. Hey, uh, has to be right. Byron, come on, hot and late. We're done. It's, it's yeah. lady. It's ladies' right. night. It's ladies <laughs> night. Are y'all kicking me out? <laughs> talking about it's ladies' night. But no, Monica was just talking about her phenomenal nonprofit and how she was able to leverage mobile home investing to supplement her income and still be able to do her passion. Look, we had Byron come talk to the boys. He was the first person that we still got them editing the podcast. First one that they came to talk to. 
The man yeah, who take mine, he know that he's sitting next to a millionaire. He came in just like them. So, like, I love it. Like went crazy. And it's like, that is what we work for. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. create those moments for our kids. It's just so, so funny to me that she went back to the same school that told her, no, you can't do that. And they gave her a contract to do the same shit she was trying to do four years that ago. Part. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's part. timing. We were just talking about it. it's timing. That's crazy, though. Four years ago. But I guess COVID showed them, like, oh, I guess mm -hmm. our kids need more than a little bit. You know what I mean? They need options. Oh, yeah. They need options. Yeah. <laughs> the world is changing. They definitely need options. So y'all definitely doing some phenomenal things. People saying congratulations. They love you in the comments, Monique. <laughs> Appreciate that, y'all. Cool. Real quick, Barb. Nicole, you use a different type of car insurance for them car magnets? Mm -mm. I figured <laughs> not. I figured not, but I was like, let me throw that out there real fast. <laughs> I was like, I don't think that matters, does it? <laughs> mm -mm. But my CPA did put me on, and he told me to sell since I paid my car off. He, my car's paid. He told me to sell the car to the business so that it can be a business expense. Mm -hmm. That's another gem, y'all. Hope y'all write that down. <laughs> okay, CPA. Right. Yes. I love it. What you got to say? No, nah, I'm just, I, listen, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to mess up the flow. It's good to see Derry. How you doing, Queen? Right. It's good to see you. Um, no, nah, I mean, listen, this is, again, this is a, the teacher, teacher's appreciation. And, you know, for some of you all, um, you know, hearing our story, I've seen, I've known Wanaki now, man, over six years now, Wanaki. Yeah. You came to talk to my mentee, my girls, my advice. Yeah. Yeah. But at, a, at the other school, right. And I remember we in, uh -huh. and I had an opportunity to talk to, uh, I don't know, it was a counselor or a dean and we talked oh, more about uh, bringing an entrepreneurship program to them. And unfortunately, like Wanaki said, it was kind of like, yeah, that's, that's cool enough. And, you know, look at it, looking to see where she's at now. And, you know, again, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm super blessed to be sitting here again, you know, Wanaki seeing her career, seeing Nicole, seeing the way that she took off and even seeing Debbie up here, you know, again, just talk about, um, you know, just, you know, what you've been able to do in education, but now having an impact now, um, and, and, and impacting you know people with affordable housing. So I know y'all dropped some gems. I'm gonna have to go look at the replay. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We all got dates scheduled at a Home Depot with our apparel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, with our apparel on, right? <laughs> we got Home Depot date. I never, I never went to Home Depot for no reason, but now I'm gonna go. And I always wear my stuff. You but now I'm gonna just your stuff on. And now I'm gonna just go for no reason. Mm -hmm. I know that's that's a gym though. But like, cause like Monica mm -hmm. said, you can always find somebody to connect with, mm -hmm. especially if definitely was a Home Depot that's like right by the community. You yep. definitely mm -hmm. gonna meet people that either live in the community, they've done work, they know all the tea about the community. They gonna be giving yep. you the rundown, the A to Z. So no, that's definitely a gym. So yes, any well, we the only ones in there for no reason. They in that's right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they working. I love it. Sheree said, I'll be right with y'all wearing my shirts. <laughs> yes, come through, Sheree. <laughs> come through. So let me ask y'all this. Maybe y'all answered this already. If y'all did, y'all ain't gotta answer this. Um, what advice did y'all have for I'm just curious, did y'all drop advice for teachers that's that's that you know that have that have you know, again, they have they have issues with scheduling. Around with scheduling? scheduling, sure. Yeah, we talked about scheduling, but of course, any other advice that y'all have for any teachers right now that's kind of battling, like trying to do that, but then still make time for this mobile home investing journey. I'm I'm, I'm gonna tell you another one too. I don't know how y'all do it in in Illinois, but in the summertime, we don't work, but we get paid. Well, I was a 10 month employee, so I got all of my money in 10 months and we mm -hmm. got paid once a month. Mm -hmm. Devry, are y'all kind of the same in Charlotte area? Like we're 10 and I get paid through the end of May. I'm going to tell you something. When the, uh, I'm, I was pimping the school, y'all ain't even going to lie. <laughs> so, so when the end of May came, right, June, the last week of school was like June 1st. They would give us contracts. I was making like $22 an hour. 
to drive on the bus to deliver food to where communities. I knew that they were fucking mobile home parks. I was like, I'll do it. <laughs> that's my girl. That's my coach. That's, dope. that's my that's coach. So dope. So I, I had on this call right now. What she say? Your principal on this call right now. Oh, <laughs> oh no, she didn't already hit me up. Like, how can I get in? Yeah. For real. <laughs> So oh I would go do that for four hours. But while I was there, what shirts y'all think I had on? I didn't give a because the kids was out <laughs> the school building. On, and I didn't have to drive. I was on the school bus. Turn right, right here. But wait, why you definitely be on the school bus riding like this? <laughs> <bouncy. laughs> that bus bouncy. <laughs> It was like you want to just, with you. You want to circle through and park at the mailbox? No, I want you to go down each street. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sitting there with my pen right now, each empty lot number, and the oh. park manager pulled up. Y'all, I connected with the park manager. That's what I'm saying. So teachers, y'all off in the summertime, right? Take yeah. full advantage of it, right? Yeah. Your your teacher, your principal offer you a contract. Normally, yeah. things that we do in the summertime is for what? Low income families, what do they need? Because where do low income students stay? Normally in mobile home parks or in that area. So whatever they needed, I was like, I'm there. I'll do it. I'll get it done. Because I knew what I was going to be doing between eight to noon. Okay. Yeah. And if you're a teacher, I definitely take the information seriously. Because what I also noticed is a lot of teachers have second jobs. Like they will take a night job. They will have a summer job. So if you're in this space, I say definitely just don't get distracted because it'll be easier for you to take those jobs. And then you're going to feel like you have even less time to study and do what you need to do. So I would say take this time that you have off. Don't go get that. I mean, unless you just I can't tell you what to do, actually, and how to make your money. But if you don't absolutely like need it, take that time to focus on mobile homes. Because I definitely had a second job as a teacher. I was the bartender. I was swinging yeah. education during the day and alcohol. <laughs> alcohol at night. Alcohol <laughs> <laughs> at night. That's so funny. Real quick, go back to um Barb's comment, right? I love Barb's comment because she said, I like that mobile home investing isn't saturated. Yes. Let them know, Barb, because how many of you in the comments think that it is saturated? Give me a thumbs up if you Be think honest. Be right. honest. Yeah. Be honest and let me know if you think it is saturated because that's something that we have definitely heard on our lives, even in our in-person events, that people are like scared to jump in this now because they see that it's so many people doing it. You don't want to do regular real estate then either because if you think it's saturated, <laughs> yes, you got to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. That's really a fact. Yeah. So, so what I'm hearing from some of y'all answers is basically teachers in that summer vacation they need to be hustling they need to be outside putting up banding signs when you mean you mean to tell me you get off at three four o'clock you can be outside putting up banding signs and you can make enough time to go out and do mobile home investing so you can make an extra anywhere from 40 to a hundred thousand dollars for the year that's what you, that's what i'm hearing that's exactly what you hear. Yes. That's exactly. That was really good, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm make sure I heard it correct. <laughs> My mentees, my advisees, um, whenever I would have, like, if I, I was really cool with their parents, so if they come kick me out, take them out to eat, whatever the case may be, the exchange would be band signs. You're going to help me drop these band signs. And they loved it, too, because they were learning something different. So I even said this before, like, my very first mobile home, we were, like, doing it our, a lot ourselves. I had one of my mentees in there paint. Two of them was in there painting, and I paid them to do it. But they got that experience as well. They was like, "Dang, I ain't never been in a mobile home before. This was fun." I'm like, I, "I'm glad you loved it." Same time, right? <laughs> Same and thing. they learning a skill, and they learning something that they never yeah. would have been introduced to otherwise. So, I was using my kids with their parents' permission, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I you love think. You think I ain't go down the wood shop and get a couple of things built? Okay. You like the funniest person I know. He said, Miss Briscoe, we're trying to figure out our new project. I said, well, look no further. <laughs> Let me tell you what it. you can give them. Okay. Oh, man. I love it. Yeah. 
So really quick, going back to this, uh, is mobile home investing saturated? So we got Tish said, yeah, I feel late to the game. I think Akia said, yeah, I think I'm late. But then it's so unfortunate because we never can see who the Facebook user is, but I love this. It said, not at all. It can be thousands of mobile home investors, but are they consistent? That part. It, that part. <laughs> <laughs> that part. Everybody can say like, oh, I'm doing mobile home investing, but are they consistently in the field? Are they consistently closing deals or have they just closed a deal or two, which is still amazing. But again, that has nothing to do with the numbers and what potential you can do in your area. Right. Yeah. And then if you can look and see what you're skilled at and how you can help add value to somebody flipping the mobile home or to the space in general. Like there are so many yeah. different layers to mobile home investing, to anything in general, really. Yeah. So it never has to just be black and white. It doesn't have to just be, I'm gonna just sell this home. But but your, your daddy got a moving company. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like there's still a mm -hmm. way to get in the business. It mm -hmm. just is gonna look a little differently, but people need homes moved all the time. So mm -hmm. let me use that let me utilize that resource you know yep. and look at what lyra said lyra said in between my deals i offer boots on the ground service and handyman service y'all nice. don't just think we all out here fixing and flipping and yeah. wholesaling. I, i'm definitely boots on the ground i used to be a lot yeah Lots. yeah i'm glad you talked about that because it's really like people i think I think, Nicole, when they see us, they see what we've been able to do. They see our students and they're like, OK, I'm going to fix and flip. But that may not be you. Like, you got to mm -hmm. find, like, Wanaki, like you just talked about. Like, you have to find, like, what is your niche in mobile home investing? What is your passion? Let me tell you something. The best thing that you can do if you don't know what to do is build a relationship with mobile home movers. Mm -hmm. I got I'm, I got a park owner now and I don't care. I'm going to say it. He got so much money that he bought this part, but he don't know what he doing. Mm -hmm. Usually, so he, pay, I go. he pays me a thousand dollars per move from setting up a move. All I'm doing is picking up the damn phone. <laughs> Say, hey, can you go to such and such and pick this house up and go and drop it off at this part? Wow, I've done that for him four times already. That's four thousand hey, dollars. Hey. That's all I'm doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, oh let me let me tell you how difficult it can be when it rains i'll call him and be like hey are we rescheduling i already know the answer yes nicole we rescheduling maybe next week okay hey john just want to let you know we're gonna reschedule your move okay well thank you for staying on top of it no problem mm -hmm. yes, nice. what you, uh, what I love about nicole. Oh, go ahead Wanaki. No, I was just saying that's easy money. Like. Mm -hmm. and, and what I love about it, I said like it's easy money. And those opportunities came from their consistency. Yeah, from those them. opportunities came from them not look like that play that Nicole just gave y'all about the mover. That didn't happen the first day. That didn't happen the first week. That didn't happen. Month. No, yeah. that happened from the consistency. That happened from numerous deals. That happened from her putting in the work. And then the easy money came. So sometimes mm -hmm. I know y'all may hear like, man, okay, well, I want to do that. Let me see if I can build. You got to build the relationship first. And then mm -hmm. somebody had a good question. I think that was Lola said, what does the boots on the ground mean? Um, mm -hmm. And basically, Wanaki, I'll let you, can you explain that to being boots on the ground? That's a good question. Yeah, so I've actually done that with investors who invested out of state, in my state. They can't actually go to the house or mm -hmm. show the house often. Um, so I will. You know what I mean? And I'll just charge them for it each day. Every time you need something, then yeah, I can do it for you because I'm. it's convenient for you. So really what they're paying for is convenience. Sometimes people might be really busy doing other things and they can't make it to close the deal. Oh, no worries. I can do that. I got you. You know what I mean? Like I can do that. So boots on the ground literally is just that. Like being somebody's boots on the ground now. <sighs> Now, I'm not going to be boots on the ground every day for this deal because now we're going to talk about <laughs> But you know what I mean? If you have little things that you can't do and I got time, absolutely. Right. Got you. Mm -hmm. And I'm going there anyway. So now I'm just going to get paid to go there. Mm -hmm. Shout out. What, what squad was Lola in? What? Hey, baby. Hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know I didn't want to say. I'll be getting oh, stuff Oh, that's Lola. Lola. Lola, Lola, Lola. Look. Yeah. Look, y'all, Lola cleaning out a mobile home now. Why she done found a bird with a head chopped off? He no. died. Somebody chopped that bird head off. Devry, did you see that picture she put in the yes. group? 
I did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Home. <laughs> and, she, and she was holding it just as bold. She had gloves on, but she was like, look. Never. Wow. You're a real one. So funny. Some stuff. Hey, Lola. I didn't know that was Lola. Ooh. Lola. Hey, girl. I'm going to share a little bit of tea. Let me tell you something. What else Lola is tapping into, I believe. Mm -hmm. I believe her, her fiance or husband is getting his license to become a licensed mobile home mover. Another... another they about to be a one-stop shop. We always yeah. need that was my husband. Her husband, my bad. Yeah, her <laughs> husband. You know what I'm saying? That y'all, I can't tell y'all how many times we be begging for movers. I got 14 different movers. And it seemed like all of them be busy at the same time. You we you can never not have enough movers. Yes. Thanks. Right, Lorenzo. Oh, <laughs> what in this Lorenzo <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So now that's a fact. Look, I think we didn't learn so much tonight. We didn't learn about consistency. We didn't get y'all some plays on some other avenues that you can take with their mobile home investing. And man, put that one up. Which I, one? I, just put that one up. Okay. I like this one. So Javier says, "Hey, I said, hey, love the channel. Just curious about being uh, about. Being, I'm looking to start my first marketing campaign this week." Have y'all done back car window advertising on friends or family's cars saying I buy mobile homes like a bandit sound on the back windows of cars like a sticker? That's an amazing idea. The only thing I want to tell you is make sure you have visibility. Yeah. That's it. As long as you have visibility and you can see out that back window, go for it. That's amazing. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I like that too. Look, Nicole, don't your plates say mobile home? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. My license plate said, well, it says mobile home money is a dollar sign but people will still stop and be like you buy mobile homes yeah girl mm -hmm. oh exactly. but you can really afford, you must can they must be really making you a lot of money because it's a maserati and it do okay well i know somebody selling the mobile home part i'm like thank you god <laughs> i love it that's amazing. But no, shout out to you, Javier. That's that's an amazing idea. Because yeah, a lot right. of people, yeah, that's that's a play. Because a lot of people, like you said, Nicole, I know you do the car magnets where you put it on the side, but yeah, the back of the car, because yeah, it's always gonna be people behind you. So, <laughs> so listen, they're gonna be intrigued, like mobile homes. Okay, let me see what that's about. Now, Javier, make sure too you let your family know if they're gonna willing to do it. Every time somebody calls and says, Hey, I saw you on a white Kia and you know that's your uncle car, or I saw you on a black Honda and that's your aunt car. Every time, Auntie, somebody call me and I close the deal, I'm gonna give you three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep, they they gonna let you bando. Your cousin's gonna be calling. Hey, Auntie said you put it. Can you put it on my car? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, Damn, I, I, I wish I had the bomb sound like that boom, like you yeah. know, when the DJ <laughs> dropped that because that was just a bar. That was a bar. Yeah, you definitely always want to compensate uh, people for their time. Oh, yeah, but they time, definitely. That's gonna okay. motivate them to go harder. Now, I want to answer this because I'm in Houston. Do you drop bandit signs in mobile home community or in the neighborhood? So, here's this thing first, uh, Miss Jones heard we're gonna get you in the community. No, no, hold on, pause. <laughs> A star, I need to see you in Houston. Yeah, That's what makes motivate. <laughs> That's where I need he, to see you at. He always come on the Facebook, I mean the YouTube lives. Hey, yes. come meet us in person, A star. So listen, real quick, we definitely got to plug our event since she reminded me that she's in Houston, and we definitely gonna be in Houston June 11th for our Mix and Motivate weekend. We got some heavy hitters coming in the building. We got Nicole going over everything wholesaling we talking about mobile home parks we got some other individuals talking about some mindset and some great things that you can do yes. with traditional real estate so listen a star i know byron gonna answer that question but i think even beyond that we definitely need to see you in the building and oh we didn't even tell them so here's the thing y'all if y'all come to houston this how this this how much we want you in the room when i say we want you in the room because we love engaging with y'all if you come to houston the ticket is 297 I think we got early bird tickets for 197. Yes, and that will be closing. I feel like it's Monday. Monday. I gotta double check. But yeah, so you definitely want to make sure you get that early bird price. This a week, this is what I say I want to make Houston a vibe. Houston is a beautiful city to visit. We're gonna give you just for being in the building our course that is 1997. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna get a course with your ticket. 
So not only you'll get the course, you're gonna learn from us hands on. You get to ask your questions. So that 1997, honestly, for the course is your plane ticket, your hotel, yeah. and your <laughs> ticket, which you're getting a free course. And we telling you to come rock with us in Houston. That's nice. So I definitely want to see you in the building. That's, that's pretty big. That's nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know that, that's what we you know, do. You know how we do. That's, that's what we do over here at Mobile Home Elite. You know, you know how we do. It. So just to make sure I heard you correctly, I pay $197 to see you all in Houston. I get to ask questions, to meet you all, see you all in person, and I get the course for free. Yeah. And the course is what you all sell now for $2,000. Yeah. Correct. Y'all are crazy. Yeah. I'm with you, Sheree. Damn. Y'all got to on that before they change their mind. Like, they realize how crazy that is. Yes. That's what I said. It's winter season. It's winter season. Emily said, well, we be getting the course at a New York event. You know, we ain't got that yet. We just we focused on Houston right now. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We going we gonna to get y'all something, though. I don't know if it's going to be the course. Emily, em come Emily said, I, I Right, I'm getting that course in New York too. I love it. I love it. Houston, listen, I'm telling you, come to come to Houston. Uh, you can, you're gonna take Kate now, real quick. A star, you said, Here's the thing, there's a big no no. Do never anybody want never drop bandit size inside of a mobile home community, yeah. right? That is a no no. Okay, now you said, or in neighborhoods, yes. You can do it in the neighborhoods, but don't drop it in the community. Yes, I love it. But funny, everybody wants a discount for their cities. Well, now we said Houston. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, that's a blessing. I hope that's a come up. I hope y'all know the value that y'all getting yes. for coming to Houston. Yeah, New York, y'all want to come in strong. I see it's a big New York they family. Not Right, and all y'all New Yorkers, I better see y'all in September too. Because well, we might have something special for New York. We might got some. We got to pull out some tricks out the bag in New York. Right, you know New York. You know, you know, we know all the the heavies out there. So they are gonna take y'all on the bus tour. I'm just kidding. <laughs> in the Bronx. There she go. Right. Starting rumors. There she go. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> there she go. There she go. <laughs> I was saying I don't want no parts of this. <laughs> I'm dead. I'm dead. No, this was fun, y'all. Again, shout out all the teachers on here. I think I asked earlier, were there any teachers? I feel like we had one or two. So definitely want to shout y'all out, give our appreciation for everything that y'all do. And definitely shout you out for being on here tonight and just continuing to learn your mobile home investing journey. So I know Babe just went ahead and put up that mixandmotivate.com. If you want to come join us in Houston, it's going to be a vibe. Like you said, look look what all you're getting for $197. Mm -hmm. And then, that's, that's real, yeah, real quick, because I think we had some discrepancies from that versus the VIP. So the VIP, you'll still get $100 off. That one is $397, but the VIP comes with a private meet and greet. Um, with you and other you know vip attendees but that's when you can be in a more <laughs> intimate space so you can really ask your questions get the information that you need to know with us along with other speakers as well so i will <laughs> say one thing that i did learn about like investing in vip because that is an investment is not only do you get to connect with them but then the networking is so much more like valuable mm -hmm. because then you're around people who saw value in investing in VIP as well, which means that these are people who probably are more likely to take action to mm -hmm. keep like you're in the quality of people that you get to network in that with in that space. Very different. So I mm -hmm. always say VIP is an investment for sure. Mm -hmm. Like you win across the board with that. And can I challenge you all to do one thing before we close out? I see a lot of names in the comments and I appreciate y'all for support and always showing up. Right. But I really want to challenge you after this live and you got some more information, go do something with it. Go so we've been, we've been talking about apparel, right? Go get you a t-shirt to say, I buy mobile homes. It can just be one t-shirt, one t-shirt, right? Go order you the car magnets. I order my magnets from magnets on the cheap.com. Right now, they got a 50% off sale. Nicole, I can't afford car magnets. I understand they're only $60. I can't afford a t-shirt. Go in the school and print you out some flyers that say, I buy mobile homes. And post them 
in the laundromats, postmet social services, places where people need services. Yeah. Just to see how many people call you. Yes. You would be surprised. Yes. That's a fact. Please go do something after this. Go, yep, Lorenzo, go make a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, go, go. I love it. I love it. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's what's up. I love it. Said challenge accepted. I love it, man. This y'all. This is. I know this was dope, man. I appreciate y'all, Queens, for even, you know, again, Devery. I, I truly appreciate you, Monarchy, like always. Nicole, um, you know, everybody that's in there. Everybody's even thinking about it. Listen, it's the power and proximity. And what I mean by the power and proximity, some rooms you just need to be in. Right now, you you was forty seven people that's on here, and forty seven people are learning about mobile home investing. They taught you gems like we're just those those things. If you apply that, will bring you so many leads, right? And leads yeah. is what equals not only money, but leads equal you helping people get affordable housing, right? Mm -hmm. So the power and proximity. You on live with us right now, and you are taking this information. So. I'm gonna tell y'all, get in the rooms. The reason yes. why yes. Nicole, Devery, Wanaki, ourselves, we yeah. got in rooms and we made investments yeah. to get in rooms that here's the thing. I could have, I could have been, if I would have been, let's say I would have listened, I would I, I wasn't in the room, but I was actually watching. I would I got more information by being able to reach out and touch somebody, right? Mm -hmm. And being able to get something, I was like, because it was personable. That person spoke to me. And guess what? I didn't want to let them down because they gave me something that was so valuable that I'm like, no, nah, I, I got to do this. So it's the power and proximity. You can be, you can be either be right close, or what happens is you can say, Well, I'm gonna keep on doing this, I'm gonna keep on doing it the way I want to do it, and your life is gonna be the way the way it is. But if you get around people, that's going to force you, because again, power and proximity. If you make $100,000 now, but you start hanging around people that make $40,000, most right. likely your salary will decrease because you're not upping yourself. But right. if you're around people that make a million dollars and you make $100,000, more than likely, you're going to get on that bigger T there of 750 to a million dollars because of that power and proximity. Yes. 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 No, that's a fact. <sighs> Love it. All right, cool. So appreciate y'all again. Thank y'all so much. We're going to wrap this up and we will actually be back live on Thursday. Yes. So look, y'all seeing us a lot more. I know YouTube, y'all was talking like, where y'all been at? We back. We, we back. back. <laughs> y'all back. back. He's in that street. Right, we we, <laughs> we back. <laughs> we back live every other day. So y'all gonna see us Thursday and Thursday because Mother's Day weekend is coming up. Mother's Day is Sunday. Thursday will be our Mother's Day live. So I'm excited about that one. Oh, nice. Yes. So we will can see I, can I come to summer mother? Come on. <laughs> come on. Wait, real quick. Hey. Uh Wanaki, what kind of dog is Coco? Somebody asking. A nosy one. <laughs> Cane Corso. Cane Corso. Mm -hmm. It's I a he, it. is a boy. A girl. A girl. Oh, oh, she's she's a pretty dog, but she is needy, honey. She was like because huh? I'm on the phone. Yes, it's because she's on the phone. But no, yeah, so appreciate y'all. We're gonna Thank wrap this like up. Me. And again, we will see y'all on Thursday. Bye. Bye. See Bye. Have a good one.